नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं हूं विवेक बजाज को फाउंडर स्टॉकेज और रिलम मार्केट्स का हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज योर फ्रेंड विवेक बजाज वेरी वेरी एक्साइटेड टू रिकॉर्ड दिस वन इफ यू आर अ ट्रेडर अगर आप एक ट्रेडर हैं और नेक्स्ट लेवल पे जाना चाहते हैं यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ ट्रेडिंग एंड क्रिएट फैंटेस्टिक ट्रेडिंग मॉडल ट्रेडिंग स्ट्रैटेजी और एक लॉन्ग टर्म लाइव लिविंग ट्रेडिंग के अंदर में देखना चाहते हैं तो ये वीडियो आपके लिए मस्त है दिस इज अ फैंटेस्टिक लर्निंग कॉन्टेंट आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग विद अ ग्रेट गाय ये थोड़ा लंबा चलेगा वीडियो बट आई एम श्योर दैट यू आर गोइंग टू सी अ एग्जॉस्टिव लर्निंग ऑन द नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ ट्रेडिंग विच वी ऑल शुड लर्न फ्रेंड्स आई एम वेरी वेरी हैप्पी दैट फेस टू फेस इज डूइंग सच अ ग्रेट वर्क ऑलवेज एक्साइटेड टू रिकॉर्ड न्यू एंड न्यू कॉन्टेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू एंड मीट न्यू फ्रेंड्स मेक न्यू फ्रेंड्स This initiative has led to more than 125 videos, and every video is like a gold mine of knowledge. If you have uh, come to this channel for the first time, uh, this face-to-face has revolutionized the financial education in India by giving people access to right people. आप अगर इस चैनल में पहली बार आए हैं तो आप इस चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और मेरे काम के साथ जुड़िए बिकॉज दिस इज अ चैनल वेयर वी हैव लीस्ट एंटरटेनमेंट एंड लॉट्स ऑफ सीरियस लर्निंग फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू वेल थैंक यू फॉर सींग दिस वीडियो एंड मोटिवेटिंग मी ऑलवेज तो आज के जो मेरे गेस्ट हैं वो हमको सिखाएंगे रूल बेस्ड सिस्टमेटिक ट्रेडिंग की ए से लेके जेड तक बहुत एक्साइटिंग होने वाला है इसको ध्यान से सुनिएगा अगर हो सके तो पेन और पेपर ले आइए गेट योर पेन एंड पेपर सो दैट यू कैन राइट डाउन नोट्स एंड इफ यू मेक गुड नोट्स डेफिनेटली इट विल एड वैल्यू टू यू सो दिस इज गोइंग टू एन इंग्लिश सेशन बिकॉज माई फ्रेंड He is from down south, uh, but we will try to speak as slow as possible, ताकि मेरे जो हिंदी भाषी learners हैं उनको भी इसका फायदा हो जाए And I'll request him to speak Hindi also in the middle, but I can only request that. Well, let me welcome Rajendran into this discussion. Hello, Rajendran. Hi, Vivek. How are you? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm exciting. I mean, I'm I'm excited to talk in today's session uh, here. Like. Uh, I guess a lot of systematic trading contents is what we're going to talk about. That I thought like we could do some live uh, coding session as well, so that we can demonstrate uh, how to design a trading strategy right from the scratch to backtesting and uh, uh, other validation techniques. So uh, I'm really excited and my heart is thumping <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm also very excited to hear uh, this lovely, lovely learning content from you. Uh, but first of all, let me wish you a very happy Deepavali. We are recording just after Deepavali, so. <laughs> I hope you have a great year ahead and uh, keep on spreading the right education across the world. Yeah. Uh, thanks Vivek and thanks for giving me an opportunity to talk in your uh, face to face content and uh, I'm a very big fan of face to face. I had seen a lot of uh, content uh, a lot of interviews uh, the traders interviews and it was uh, uh, generally it was motivating uh, uh, traders uh, particularly who want to learn new concepts and uh, Uh, thanks for that inspirational uh, move from your side uh, truly a, a big moment which is required for the uh, traders uh, to learn new concepts techniques and thanks for that wonderful initiative thank you thank you it really means a lot it motivates me to do more and more and uh, we have friends like you who are here to take out uh, learners to the next level of the learning zone so let's let's get deep dive into it first of all let me let me just know more about you let my learners know more about you so tell us about you uh, what has been your background education and experience and why are you doing this which you are doing and then we go deep dive into the concepts which you have you have for us sure uh, i mean uh, uh, my name is rajendra right so i am from bangalore and uh, my native is from tamil nadu so i've been an uh, engineer electronics and communication engineer i done my engineering back in 2005 and then uh, by the time i do watch markets only in the tv channels max to max i know what is nifty and some couple of stocks like uh, it company stocks that's what maximum i do know but after 2005 onwards right so i got a job in my core industry itself i worked in various telecom companies like uh, air cell and uh, nokia siemens networks and my last job was with ericsson as an it specialist right so Uh, but then my core idea is to get into some sort of an IT background. I am from more from a middle class family uh, back then, and uh, uh, so I all in those uh, my engineering career, right? I want to get into some IT job. So I started studying 
programming concepts more than uh, my engineering uh, subjects. So most of the time I used to hang out with uh, programming. But then after getting my job in core industry, I thought like uh, all these programming efforts has been uh, gone for a toss, right? So what I'm going to do with that? And that is where the markets came in. Uh, back then, uh, 2006, I thought like after market hours, uh, I've been mostly getting into night shifts mostly. So during live markets, I'm kind of a full-time trader most of the times. Mm -hmm. So market impresses me to learn technical analysis. And after some point of time, uh, the curiosity to build your own indicators. So when you have ideas, when you have thought process, you want to create your own thoughts. You want your own designs. So that's where I, I, I was searching. So a lot of options uh, was available back then. Uh, Ami Broker, Metastock. Uh, by, by that time, TradingView is not available, but uh, uh, Ami Broker and Metastock was the primary source back then. And uh, I was very much fascinated about Ami Broker initially because it was quite similar to MATLAB. MATLAB is something which I learned in my electronics and communication subject. It was, it was quite similar. The programming is also quite similar. So I hooked on to Ami Broker to learn more and more because that is where I am able to implement my thoughts, design, whatever I want to implement, I'm able to implement it. I'm able to back check it. I'm able to optimize it. So a lot more uh, endless possibilities when it comes to systematic trading it created uh, back in 2009. But back then, a lot many uh, resources are not there. So it is more of an independent uh, effort to learn something uh, new about trading systems. Now, a lot of resources are available in uh, internet and e-learn markets <laughs> and everywhere. Uh, but then back then, YouTube was streaming. <laughs> We don't have content, so we don't have a Zoom meeting to collaborate. So it is more of an independent of effort. So I, I've been an AMI broker AFL programmer uh, for the last uh, 10 plus years. I design systems. I used to publish open source systems in my portal. And my portal is marketcalls.in. Mm -hmm. And uh, where I publish most of my trading systems open source, that is where uh, I get popular. I, I got frequent questions from the users, AMI broker users. And that becomes a network of... Uh, uh, that that builds like a community, right? Uh, I was one of the uh, beginners in India who uh, talk about uh, Ami broker based trading systems, right? So there are a lot of system traders was there back in those times, but uh, I am one of the uh, uh, coder uh, in Ami broker who share systems, who share knowledge on Ami broker back then. Yeah. yeah. True, and uh, I've seen your website quite a lot many times. Uh, although okay. I'm not a uh, not a deep. Uh, tech uh, systematic trader I, I have do have a team which does all these things but uh, yes you are, you are quite a famous guy and you have been in market for a long time so who better than you to teach us about systematic trading and uh, we all know that trading view has democratized yes, the, the whole idea of uh, helping uh, uh, at a ground level retail guys to develop their own system so i believe today we are going to cover trading view and how you use it to develop yes absolutely yeah so not only the retail guys even the institutional people also they uh, i'm seeing they completely shifted their uh, uh, analysis to trading view because it's so user friendly available yeah. across all the devices so yeah. pretty interesting tool uh, i've been watching since the start of the trading view 2013 onwards so i learned uh, uh, if you learn Ami Broker, like uh, coding in Ami, PineScript is something which is uh, like a piece of cakewalk. So uh, uh, today we're going to learn, uh, if you are a beginner out there, how a beginner can learn to code in uh, TradingView PineScript is one of the primary topics I'm going to cover along with systematic trading. Fantastic. So friend, this is going to be a very exciting video. So people who are serious learners, stay till the end. People who are entertainment seeker, I think you'll get bored. So you may... <laughs> You may get dropped because this is a serious stuff. This is not entertainment. But yeah. if you really want it uh, to be there in your life forever, then you, still, you should stay till the end. Anyway, so uh, Rajendra, would you like to share your screen and let's get into the learning curve? Sure. Uh, is my screen uh, yes. visible? Yes. All right. So let's first of all, straight away we'll get into the different types of trading system that you can build using trading view because there are uh, when it comes to trading system right trading systems is nothing but uh, a set of rules i would say that a rule based trading approach now back in uh, 2006 7 8 
my trading approach is like kind of a haphazard i learn technical analysis but implementing the technical analysis in the live market it is kind of a haphazard i would say that randomly i was applying randomly i was selecting stocks and there is no defined a process for that uh, uh, for for making money i i since i am from the engineering background i thought like uh, more often uh, uh, systematic flow is required for taking an investing and trading decision some sort of a scientific based evidence some sort of a scientific based approach towards trading so that is where uh, i started uh, entering into systematic trading and uh, since most of the companies which i worked right so most of the companies like nokia siemens networks or ericsson so they make money on top of the strong process so i w- i like that approach and also i thought of uh, implementing those approaches because those are the approaches which will minimize the risk and maximize their returns so systematic trading is something uh, very similar to that uh, and uh, so it is nothing but a simple rule based approach Uh, when when i say rule based approach the entries exits the position sizing everything can be converted into a rules uh, let me tell you why this is so important because back then when you are learning uh, the market for the very first time you will be lot of, uh, you you'll be with a lot of emotions will be having uh, fear anger extreme greed extreme happiness right you will not be able to keep your emotions under control which is very difficult maybe uh, one in a thousand or uh, 10 in a thousand could be able to do that but majority of the traders they are obsessed with those emotions and uh, they still want to participate in the market and that is where people started making mistakes so i was also part of being part of that right i was like uh, keep on making money losing money making money losing money there is no con- continuous a consistent effort there i was jumping from one indicator to another indicator one time frame to another time frame so to avoid all those things that is what i thought like i need some sort of a flow a systematic approach which i want to follow like a soldier or you you call it like a i wanted to follow it like a donkey and uh, thereby i want to grab a trading edge over a period of time another way is like uh, i also want to reduce my screen time as well so i don't want to engage with the markets most of the time uh, when the market when the system says buy i want to buy it when the system says sell i want to sell it so i want to avoid judging the markets i don't want to do that uh, where the market is headed because i thought like maybe i at times i'm not able to understand the markets better because sometimes you know right market often does crazy things which we are not able to uh, understand we uh, we humans are basically are not uh, created to are designed to understand what is happening in the markets most of the times uh, for no reason uh, a bullish market would have been sold off for a no reason a bearish market you know that when march 2020 entire markets went into a pandemic nobody thought like uh, the market which crashed will be will be from eight, from 7500 levels to 18000 odds nobody would have been thought about that uh, but if i would have followed the market scientifically over a period of time right so maybe i might have able to capitalize those price action moments so that is where i shifted my career towards systematic trading i've been a systematic trader since 2009 to 2014 for 5 years i done a pure systematic trading and then i i came full time and i thought like maybe i should give a go to discretionary trading as well so that is where uh, i explored concepts like market profile and order flow and uh, now my trading itself kind of a semi systematic it's not purely systematic it's kind of a semi systematic the rules is what i do follow most of the times and uh, yes i had explored the fully systematic trading automated trading so discretionary trading all these parts i had learned a significant amount of time uh, since 2019 onward right and uh, even large institutions large institutions medium scale institutions these days play a major important role in systematic trading and not only in systematic trading they also do in systematic investing as well so if you probably if you see the uh, the very modern uh, tools like small case kind of tools what they practice is mostly systematic investing concepts is what they practice most of the time 
So systematic trading and systematic investing is there at most of the places these days, right? So back then in 2009, very few people are practicing. Now many people are jumping into that to capture the edge in the markets. And uh, particularly talking about systematic trading, right? I've been a trend follower uh, most of the time uh, back in 2009 to 2014. I practice mostly trend following systems, but now I don't have any personal choice. I follow trend following systems, mean reversion systems, I mean, trend reversal systems or momentum trading approaches. So I completely changed in my uh, trading style over a period of time. But uh, back then I was more of a uh, trend follower. I love to follow the trend because it's very easy to do and uh, not much of hassles also. It is very plain simple uh, when to buy, when to exit, when to reverse the position. It's very plain simple. Only thing uh, that uh, what trend following will do is like uh, it will capture the trend. It will not predict anything. I mean, none of the strategies that we design in the markets are not going to predict anything in the markets, right? So uh, basically they are nothing but a bunch of rules. Uh, rules, you know, right, uh, mathematical rules. Uh, I strongly have a belief that uh, math don't have the brain to predict the future, right? So, but mathematics can be a very good tool to control our losses and to increase our profitability. That's how I see the uh, markets because most of the trend following strategies, they usually have a lower win rates, trend following strategies or trend reversal strategies. Um, you will be having a win rate roughly around 40 to 60 percent, depends upon what time frame you're using. So when the win rate itself is going to be a 40 percent win rate, when I say 40 percent win rate means if you are taking 100 trades, right? So out of 100 trades, uh, probably only 40 to 45 trades are going to be successful. Imagine a rest of 60 or 55 plus trades are going to get into losses. But still trend following tends to make money over a period of time. The primary reason behind that is uh, uh, trend following has a very good risk reward ratio over a period of time. When I talk about risk reward ratio, people will be talking about per trade level. I'm not talking about per trade level. I'm talking about over a period of time. Okay. So, uh, well, since we are going to talk particularly about uh, trading view based strategies, I'm going to explain some very simple trend following approaches, how you can build in uh, trading view and some of the simplified concepts, like uh, some, some get to know concepts of pine script coding, like uh, trading view supports and a programming language called pine script coding. I'm going to explain a little bit uh, deeper into that. And then um, we're going to slowly build indicators and on top of the indicators, we're going to convert that indicators into strategies and those strategies, uh, how to uh, backtest it. And uh, if possible, if time permits, how to automate those strategies. So that is what uh, the primary agenda is all about. So uh, we learned uh, what is a rule-based uh, trading, right? So when uh, talking about rule-based trading, first thing uh, comes into my mind is like, uh, there, are, there are three things uh, I would like to talk about that maybe I'll try to take a whiteboard here. Yeah, I remember uh, when we had, we were discussing with, I think, Vishal or Vivek, and they mentioned that uh, rule-based systematic trading is like the two minutes of Maggie formula, <laughs> where <laughs> Maggie has told you exactly how to make it, so you don't deviate too much. Having yes. said that, today I got a very good perspective from you that uh, having a hybrid model, uh, mm -hmm. where you can build up a good food on top of that Maggie by adding vegetables or or by doing any kind of thing which you believe will enhance your flavor. So it's, it's actually a good I would say like it's like a Baskin Robbins, like you have uh, uh, various different types of toppings on top of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a pretty good perspective. Please yeah. continue. So, so when it comes to rule-based trading, right? So a couple of things that uh, we need to automate. What are the things that we are going to automate uh, uh, when it comes to rule-based trading and rule-based trading probably uh, i mean uh, my handwriting is pretty uh, rather i'll take an uh, text well, to uh, uh, your handwriting is pretty much okay i mean i have a lot of doctor friends around me and i still understand what they write <laughs> anyways okay so I'll, I'll try with so when it comes to rule-based trading right so we need to determine what symbol to trade what symbol to trade 
this we can even select based on rules maybe using some sort of a scanners we can do that and second thing is like uh, when to trade what to trade when to trade then the third one is how much to trade so how much to trade and uh, the fourth one is how to execute how to execute so this is what the primary things when you want to design your own trading strategy so this can be done in two ways one is we can do ranking or we can also do some uh, screening the stocks we can use some screeners when to trade this is the actual trading logic it's nothing but our indicators so it's more of a trading indicators now on top of that we write our rules like when to enter uh, long entry long exit long exit now, all these things can be uh, they are nothing but the rules which are built on top of the indicators for example let's say uh, i'm having an macd if macd is crossing uh, above zero and at the same time rsi is also uh, showing momentum let's say greater than 65 i want to enter into the longs so that is my long entry rules so likewise when you want to exit i want to exit only if the macd is dropping down below zero so that becomes a long exit over here likewise we also uh, if in case we need a short entry or short exit and short exit we can go with that and how much to trade it talks about position sizing position sizing Now, as of now i'm not touching this point but this is one of the most important point when it comes to systematic trading whether you want to do, keep a constant position sizing or when you want you want to keep on changing your position sizing you want to apply dynamic position sizing so those are additional uh, points from here and the, the most important thing is like uh, this is nothing but about trading logic so the second point is all about a trading logic over here now on top of the trading logic we have something called execution logic execution logic so the difference between trading logic and execution logic is like it's like when to trade and how to trade the difference is when to trade talks about logical conditions as i said uh, macd crossing uh, uh, zero or rsi greater than 65 that kind of logical conditions when to enter when to exit it talks about entry and exit our execution logic talks about what kind of orders you're going to submit when you're going to submit am i going to submit when the signal is coming in i'm going to go submit the signals immediately or let's say the signal is coming in when you want to trade you see the signal immediately you want to trade the signal or you wait for the candle to complete and then you want to take a trade right so that talks about execution logic and uh, we can also talk about like uh, target stop loss and are you want to send uh, uh, trades with the bracket orders or cover orders what kind of orders you want to send do you want to send a limit order right all those things are possible with uh, trading view kind of uh, approaches both trading logic and execution logic is clearly possible uh, irrespective of that if you use any tool tomorrow right let it be trading view let it be ami broker let it be ninja trader or let it be meta trader or let it be meta stock the operations are going to be the same thing over here repeatedly over and again it's going to be the same thing so the core part itself lying with the trading logic position sizing and the execution logic so let me go back to the screen here i guess now you have a fair idea about how the uh, trade what, what is the difference between the trading logic and execution logic maybe i'll show a small demonstration uh, first with uh, trading view so there are a couple of things i figure out that uh, when dealing with systematic trading there are a couple of things that we need to know about that one is knowing about the trading cost there are different styles of trading cost is there brokerage cost transaction cost slippage cost and at times when we are trading with a bigger size right the bigger the size we are trading we'll be moving the market at times if you are using the market orders yeah uh, remember uh, there are two types of order uh, mostly most of the traders use one is a market order another one is a limit order limit order correct when you put a limit order it goes to the order book and it sits and uh, you provide liquidity and uh, uh, there won't be any impact cost will be there but majority of the new traders 
when they are uh, starting with a the systematic trading they usually kick start with market order because it's the easiest one to do but at the same time when you are doing a market order based trading strategies your yeah. tra- trading strategies can be anything but you are going to execute with market orders there will be a impact cost or slippage cost will be there yeah so bigger the trading size mostly you will be moving the market so your cost will also increases a lot so when it comes to systematic trading the first thing before exploring the edge what you need to know is the what is my trading cost what is my overall trading cost that is the first thing first key learning every trader has to do the homework mm. second thing comes with the execution speed right you know that faster the speed faster the edge is going to be there and uh, moreover when it comes to systematic trading uh, w- from my experience what i had seen that is like uh, you keep your uh, holding period as small as possible and at the same time you also have an execution speed these days automation brings a lot of execution speed over here so faster the execution speed lower is going to be your slippages you are the first one to get the uh, uh, get 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 the trade yeah yeah ahead of anybody else so the execution speed has to be better so if you are a human and you are punching the orders manually probably it will take at least hardly anywhere between 1 to 3 seconds to send the order and getting a confirmation whereas if you are involved in some sort of an automation maybe you can reduce your execution time as low as like uh, kind of an 100 to 200 milliseconds maximum anywhere between 100 to 500 milliseconds you can reduce it yeah, and yeah. that becomes a greater edge over a period of time within a single trade you are not going to feel that but uh, over a period of time you would have appreciate that uh, yes uh, the, the the system is running smooth and it is delivering me a lesser uh, slippages over a period of time right so we learned about uh, size we learned about uh, the speed we learned about the cost the third uh, the fourth most important thing is the uh, trade monitoring like uh, uh, some people they think uh, i am going to do systematic trading i'm going to automate and i'm going to go to the sun and enjoy it it is not like that right so there there is something one more important process is called uh, trade monitoring uh, see if you are automating we automate only to reduce our screen time in the markets there are many traders who are part time traders who cannot engage in the markets on a regular basis mm. right i'm a full time trader i can sit in the screen all the day and i can watch the market if something is going wrong i can take an action on behalf of that but think about the people who are uh, uh, who are very uh, i mean who who have an uh, sometimes there'll be a meeting uh, to them they might be in a very uh the most important position to handle their uh, uh, work operations or uh, they are kind of a part time trader to the markets so those kind of people they cannot completely ignore the markets but once in a while they have to monitor the system to ensure that everything is running fine mm-hmm. all the systems are running in uh, in a proper mode operations are running smooth hardly probably i would say like at least uh, three times in a day probably uh, morning you need to have some routine checks and afternoon some routine checks and end of the day uh, ensure ensure that what are the signals happened the trade also had executed simultaneously so when all these things are in a proper mode right when you do that basic groundwork study most of the unwanted things in systematic trading can be eliminated and that is very much required for a systematic trader sure and uh, doing systematic trading will not completely remove your emotions but it will drastically bring down your emotions right so still emotions will be there because still the human is watching the screen and uh, uh, at times uh, then there might be an uh, strong positive emotions will be coming in a strong negative sentiment will be going on in the markets and signal will be going reversal and uh, at times humans will be having the hands to go and stop the system that is the primary thing what a trader should not do that the main purpose of the trading system itself right so allow the system to trade as a system we human we start interfering with the system we degrade the performance of the system most of the time than we are going to make it better right so at, at a beginner level uh, the trader should stay away from uh, touching the system uh, changing the time frame during the market hours so all those things people will do when they are uh, when things are going fine when systems are uh, running fine it is generating profits 
people are really happy about that they don't touch the system most of the time uh, there are times when a system is giving extraordinary profits are some sequence of losses i had seen uh, personally i had seen a lot of traders they started changing their systems they changing their approaches they start mixing other indicators now once you design the system and you want to continue with that you need to have a solid rules when you will change the system when you will step away from the system everything has to be pre decided before jumping into that right uh, as i said uh, systems are uh, mostly when you are running a system you are running a business you know right a system uh, a business how it, how they make money they identify a process they keep on doing that over and over and uh, over a period of time they keep on repeating it and that's how they generate money right you get into any big business they have a process they follow the process and they end up making money right loss is also part of the game here it is not like just because you are running a system you will be always ending up in a profitability that is uh, you should not see trading system as a money making machine but you should see trading system as your business and uh, when you are running a business you know how you should run it and uh, understanding the cost understanding the competition is these are the two primary things when you are getting into the systematic trading sure, sure. all right so now straight away we'll get into uh, uh, trading view so you know trading view is one of the top 100 websites in the world and uh, of late trading view had brought a lot of innovation one of the first innovation what they brought is like you can design your own indicators that was the very first thing they had brought using a programming tool called a pine strip otherwise trading view is quite popular among non coders also because uh, you will find a very cool charting watch list drawing tools what what a trader needs most of the tools utilities are there available at one single place a trader needs data probably trading you comes with an integrated data you don't need to uh, get additional data from data vendor or something like that so trading you comes with that and trading you comes with uh, tons and tons of strategies indicators public strategies public uh, public indicators like i can create strategies and i can share it to the public and the rest of the people can use that uh, uh, pine strip coding pine strip indicators or pine strip strategies mm-hmm. that is how the trading view community itself got built up. and uh, they have a wonderful community also now on top of that trading view had uh, innovated a lot more things on alerts automation like uh, they also came up with live trading paper trading as of now indian brokers are not uh, uh, attached to with that uh, but uh, uh, trading view also support some third party tools where brokers can use trading view as a trading application like one of the broker fires they are using trading view as a as their uh, trading uh, terminal so when it comes to trading view right so what is so impressive about is like uh, you can access it anywhere any device and the best part is like multi asset you can access any markets today you want to trade in indian markets you can do tomorrow you are moving to us and you want to trade us markets you can access that you want to access cryptos you trade cryptos commodities currencies you name what you name anything it is there in trading view the only thing which is not available as of now from the indian users perspective is like option symbols are not available but other than that uh, uh, nifty nse cash nse futures mcx futures all those instruments are available and that is why it is so popular among the indian users Right. the best part is like uh, they provide clean data the, the data which is adjusted to split bonus all those corporate adjustment data and uh, even more the best part is like uh, almost 1 lakh plus free indicators and strategies are available in trading view under the public uh, indicators and uh, you don't need to pay for any upgradation no installation cost no maintenance the best part is most of the things comes with trading view at free of cost yes Uh, the paid version also it has its own advantages but uh, if you are a user and you want to try trading you for the very first time it comes at a zero cost to kick start your systematic trading career that is the best place to start with systematic trading also and uh, yes so what you can do with trading view you can create your own indicators let's say i want i want to design some indicators in my mind i know the formula and uh, i want to implement that design into code you can do that 
I'm going to show you a simplified approach towards indicators, how you can create indicators, how you can create buy sell indications. I'm going to show that. And also, I'm going to show you how to create alerts as well. And what you can do with uh, uh, trading views, like you can create strategies. So you now you might be asking, what is the difference between indicators and strategies? Mm. See, indicators is more of a visual thing. Visually, it's, it tells you where to buy or where to sell, or it shows you in colorful format. If, using the colors, you can understand, hey, this is green means buy, red means sell. So it, indicator is more of a visual thing. Indicators cannot be backtested. However, strategies, strategies is what the rule-based trading approach is all about. On top of the indicators, we apply the rule, when to enter long, when to enter uh, short, when to exit the long, when to exit the short. We write those uh, coding in PineScript language. And yes, trading you also support a feature called webhook feature. Using that webhook feature, we can also automate our trading strategies as well. Once you create a trading strategy, we can simply automate that process as well. And we can create the trading alerts. We can create buy or sell indicator indications. And we can, on top of that, we can share whatever I had created. I can share it to the public domain. Anybody can share. It's not like uh, only few people can share. Anybody who are very new to coding, they've done some coding and they want to share it with their friends or with their families or with their uh, community of traders, they can go and share with TradingView. That is totally possible. And that is why TradingView is so, so popular. So here is a simple indicator. Let me straight away pull trading view and then I'll show you what trading view, uh, how we can go and create our first indicator. So I'm going to go to trading view. Sure. Tradingview.com. So I'll go and uh, pull up Nifty Futures. So here is Nifty Future Charts. Nifty, right? So there are two types of data they do provide for future markets. Since I do trade mostly in index derivatives, I take mostly examples from Nifty, Bank Nifty. So excuse me if you are a cash market trader. So okay. yeah, so when it comes to futures, right, they provide two set of data. One is continuous futures, yeah. mostly suits for backtesting, those kind of things. And uh, another one is uh, like uh, non-continuous futures, like contract level data, November month contract, December month contract, January month contract. So mostly, if you are a beginner, you can kickstart mostly with uh, continuous futures, uh, where once the current month future ends, automatically the next month futures will be get added up. Sure. So the moment I open, let's say I'll go with a plain vanilla charts here. I'm having a pine editor at the bottom of the chart. Yeah. So this pine editor, maybe I'll zoom a little bit so that will be a bit bigger yeah. to see it. So the moment I open the pine script editor, this is a place where I can, I'm going to design my own indicator. I'm going to write a very simple indicator. Probably I'm going to start with a simple two EMA crossover, which is very easy to understand also for understanding purpose only. I'm going to do that. Otherwise I'm not, my intention is not to do, give some uh, profitable trading strategy or yeah. something like that. My primary intention is to uh, make people aware about systematic trading and also uh, how to understand the trading view pine script codings. That's going to be the key takeaway for you people in today's session. Sure. So uh, when you are opening the code for the very first time, you'll be seeing three things over here. One is hash hash at version equal to five. So what, what does it represent is it is a compiler version. So they will be keep on upgrading uh, trading view with new functionalities, right? So when I started, they started with version one and then they moved to version two, three, four, five. Now, every time they are moving to the new version, trading view gets even more lightweight and uh, because millions of users are using it. So it has to be lightweight and uh, it also comes with newer functions, like some, some of the functions like uh, super trend kind of functions they added in the version four and version five, they added something like libraries and extended functions, a lot more new functionalities they keep on adding every now and then. So you can uh, use, if you are an old user, if you're using for the last one and a half years, maybe you might be familiar with version four. So if you are using, if you're using that style of code, right, you have to use version four. And the recent version, if you're going to start, you have to use version equal to five. So maybe who knows, uh, every year they might be keep on changing the versions. Every time they'll be keep on coming up with new upgradations. But listen, why trading you is so popular is like they have a proper documentation to learn anything right from the scratch. Okay. 
so if you are a first time user you want to code your own first time systems first yes. thing you have to go here is you have to go to this triple dot over here yeah and you can go and refer pine script documentation right from the scratch oh. they had explained clearly what is the pine script is all about they have a, given a very nice primer right so how to use the scripts how to load the scripts how how to create your first indicator what are the next steps what is the language everything they had explained about that right so if you are a first timer you have to go and read those information it, it provides you lot of ample amount of uh, ideas about how to use the pine version 5 or if in case if you are a version 4 user you are already familiar with version 4 and you want to stick only with version 4 still you can go and change the version to version 4 so they have three documentations they had given over here version 3 oh. version 4 and version 5 mm-hmm. so i was earlier most of the codes i used to code in version 4 and now i want to change it to version 5 is there any way they also given a under version 5 they also given a migration guide also i'll show you if you are a version 4 user and you want to migrate to version 5 how you can do that it's a one button that you can use it to convert it's it's they have they have provided an inbuilt converter i'll show you later on how to do that there is a convert to oh. v5 button is there you can using that you can convert it so first i'll go and uh, uh, start with the so at version equal to 5 now you understand that it's a compiler directive it is yeah. we are saying that version 5 i'm going to use the latest uh, trading view uh, functionalities so i have to follow the same process the next thing after reading the documentation right so pine script reference this is where each and every function is explained in detail okay right so it's it's uh, like uh, if you are learning a c programming language you need to know a lot of different functionalities right so likewise uh, each and every function let's say i want to know about ema function so they have a uh, something called ta.ema ta is a library and ema is a a function to calculate the exponential moving average okay likewise if i want super trend they have a function for super trend you just go and search they give examples and they also give a couple of uh, example programming also you can use this you can you can learn and you can take it in your code or you can understand how to call super trend how to access super trend how to plot signals on top of super trend so everything you can learn from here okay so there are as i said there are two things first every trader has to go through if they are if they want to self learn or i i'm more of a self learner right from uh, my college days i taught myself c c++ vc++ uh, yeah vc++ i went to nit for learning but otherwise uh, most of the learnings let it be java or uh, python or when it comes to markets i learned uh, i i i taught myself i mean broker i taught myself meta stock uh, mql4 programming mql5 programming ninja trader right so whenever i have some time i try to spend uh, uh to build some indicators on different tools right so trading view is one another uh, uh, crazy thing which i learned it, it, it's very easy to learn for me because i had done this in ami broker in mql4 so i know the process i it will be very easy for you once you learn trading view next tomorrow if you want to learn any other tool it will be very very easy for you right sure so coming back to the Uh, our very first indicator uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write a simple moving average crossover right i'm going to plot the buy and sell signal whenever there is a bullish crossover i'm going to plot a, a buy indication and whenever there is a sell indication i'm going to plot i'm um, whenever there is a negative crossover yeah or a reverse crossover i'm going to put a bearish indication on top of that it is going to be a simple indicator only so i'm going to give a name to the indicator first of all let me tell you whatever you, it's in blue color they are inbuilt functions okay inbuilt functions are uh, it does some set of job uh, which will uh, uh, let's say for example here indicator it is a declaration we are saying that hey, what i whatever i am trying to build is an indicator if it is a strategy i have to mention like a strategy okay so every function will be having a input parameters okay so sometimes we'll be having one input parameter sometimes we'll be having multiple input parameters so let's say i'll i'll go with the indicator over here i'll open the parenthesis so the parenthesis once i open if i want if i don't know what input i should supply i always go and do a control plus click automatically it opens the reference okay. Okay. corresponding reference it, it gives you detail about what is indicator some examples how you should send an example i mean how you should send the values or what are the input values so you can see that these are the inputs that i can pass some of them are mandatory some of them are optional 
So here, title, short title, overlay, format, precision, scale, lot more parameters I can control. Now, for the beginners who are very new to programmers, I'll give a simple example to understand what is a function, right? Let's say I'll, I'll go to the whiteboard over here. I'll try to explain the. Uh, I'll, I'll try to explain what is the function. Yeah, Rajendra, uh, could you also, you know, because most of the people use Excel sheet. Yes. So, yeah, I can, can take an Excel an example. Analogy, can we draw an analogy with Excel for a more, you know? Obviously, yeah. I'll uh, I'll do one thing. I'll get back to my screen here. Yeah. I'll pull up Excel. See, the functions are very similar to the Excel functions. Probably you would have familiar about uh, the sum function, lookup functions, yeah. or uh, uh, all those mathematical functions which are available in Excel. I'll show you some of the important, uh, I mean, very simple uh, example to understand what is a function is all about. Yeah. yeah. Let us say 10, 20. I'm, I'm just putting some random values over sure. here. Sure. I am going to call a function in Excel, you know, right equals you type S U M, yeah. you'll be able to get the sum function inside yeah. the sum function. I can pass the numbers. I can straight away pass number 10 comma 20. I like that. I can pass it. Yeah. So here, what I'm trying to do here is there is a function called sum, which is going to do a set of operation. The operation is nothing but an addition operation. So here it adds the value 10 and 20. It can be more also. It can be 30, 40. I can num input as many numbers I want. So yeah. these are arguments. We can we can call this as an argument. We can pass the argument to the function. And if I press enter, what the function returns the calculated value. Yeah. Right. So in a very simple term, I'm having a function. Inside the function, I send argument. Let's call this argument one and argument two and argument three and it, it keeps on going on it can be any number of arguments right so uh, as of now i'll keep that as an argument three so it returns a value it returns value over here. every function it does some computation it can be an ema cross ema value or it can be some super trend value or macd or whatever the function that you're calling it does some set of operation and returns a value right so in our case when it comes to trading view, when it comes to trading view here, here we are having an indicator as a function. If you see the bottom liner, there is a syntax values there. It can accept any number of variables. Right. It can accept title, short title, overlay. So you don't need to send all those. All those things are not necessarily from a beginner level perspective. From a, If you are a beginner level, first thing is like I want to give a value to the uh, I want to give a name to the indicator. So I'll say like my indicator name is like simple MA crossover. Okay. So I can do it in a different way. I can uh, say like, I can also say like title equal to okay. title equal to simple EMA crossover. Or I, I can say like the next one is what the next one is uh, the short title. So a short title, short title. Let's say short title equal to okay. EMA crossover. The short title is what it will be saved under the file name. If I try to save it, it will be saved under that file name. Automatically, it picks up the uh, short title over here to okay. EMA crossover and okay. it will be saved. It. So I, when I save it, it will be stored under that trading view cloud itself. Okay. So then I'm also having an one more important thing overlay. So overlay. Overlay can be either true or false. So, you know, some indicators like uh, RSI will be plotting down below the candlestick. For that, we have to give overlay equal to false. Okay. Some indicators like EMA, we have to plot on top of the candlestick. So, yeah. for that, we have to give uh, overlay as true. true. So, okay. Right. So, I can, as I said, I can also give like this. I don't need to specify the values. If I am sending the values in order, let's say a title, okay. first one is a title, second one is a short title, third one is an overlay. If you remember those things, you can pass it in order. However, I don't remember, but I want to, I know the parameters. I, then I can say overlay equals true. You don't want to pass it in, you don't want to pass it in order, but in you know the sequence. values that you want to pass it in order. You Got want it. to put it in a jumble way. You have to call the 
titles. So title I have to call it, or I have to call it like a short title. Short. Sure. So intelligently, training view knows what is what, how it is passed, and accordingly takes it. Sure. All right. So that's a difference between uh, uh, sending these values without sending those values. Got it. Yeah. So maybe I'm a bit comprehensive. <laughs> No, no, please, please be comprehensive. I mean, I, this kind of a knowledge is not easily available. So, take okay, your time. So, be comprehensive. All right. So now, uh, when designing any indicator, right? So we have to uh, do a couple of things. One is creating input controls. Creating. I'll, I'll tell you what is what. One is creating input controls. So uh, uh, remember, Rajan, I am putting a double slash over here. Rajan, is just one stupid question. Yeah. So, I mean, the double slash is basically, uh, it's a text. It doesn't yeah. have any it is a comment. Any... It is a comment. Okay. If you it's are a good comment. programmer, right? Okay. If you are a good programmer, it is a uh, commenting is a very good approach. Uh, so that uh, we explain uh, ourselves that what the code itself going to do. Okay. 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 So it's a simple plain text uh, control, uh, plain text inputs that we're going to supply. So that the code will be readable. At least we will get to know what the coding is trying to do. Sure, sure. So, Rajinder, uh, you can. I want to put, I can put a double slash and I can write my comments. Okay. Okay, I'll continue here. So we learned yes, that uh, the double slash is more about uh, commenting. It is not part of the code, but it is only for the uh, readability of what the code itself going to do. What that particular line of code is going to do. Yeah. I'm going to create a input controls. Let me call that as length one and length two. So since I'm going to code the two EMA crossover, I'm going to say like length one, length one equal to input dot int. So the input dot int is a function in version five. In version four, they were using only input. In version five, they had the designed. I want to bring a number as an input control. Maybe I'll, I'll implement, I'll show you, then I'll give you a brief uh, explanation about uh, input dot integer. So you just place your cursor over here. You'll be able to get the syntax and you'll also get the uh, return value, what it is going to return, right? So input dot int, I'm going to say like default value, default value, D F V A L. I'm going to say like 20 MA crossover and I'll say title equals length one. So you see that all these values are taken from here, default value, title, and then uh, what is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? So once I implement, and then I'll show you what is what. So min value, I'll say like, uh, I'll keep it as like uh, five and uh, maximum value, I'll keep it like uh, 200. And the step size, so the next one is like a uh, step. So step, I'm gonna keep it like one. And likewise, I'm gonna create one more control. I'm gonna say like uh, length two, length two by default i'm going to keep it like a uh, value as 50 and length two and uh, minimum value and maximum value step size i'm going to keep it the same i'll save the code right i'll save the code here now once i save the code i'll add it to the charts you will be able to see the indicators added as of now it is trying to plot the indicator is trying to plot only the closing value but let's keep that aside the primary purpose is to show you the input controls if i go to the settings i will be able to control those values over here i'm supplying the input from my side so tomorrow if i am designing an ema1 uh, and ema2 ema1 value and ema2 value i can change it dynamically Probably I'll show you the plot of the EMA values as well so that you'll be able to understand how it is done. So one is I created the input controls for the EMA so that the user can change the EMA. I don't need to go and uh, change the coding every time, every now and then. Uh, if I have the input controls, the user can play with the inputs itself. They don't need to mess up with the code. In fact, they don't need to know what is there inside the code at all mm -hmm. or at the user level. So the next one is like, I'm going to plot the EMA or maybe I, I'll compute the EMA. I'll compute the EMA uh, indicator. In our case, it's going to be EMA values. I'll say like EMA one, you see here, the EMA one is a variable. A variable is used to store something. It can be a number it can store, or it can be storing a historical data set 
or it can store some text value or it can store something called boolean boolean is nothing but either true or false so a, a variable can is primary purpose is to store some value so here i'm going to calculate the ema so the function for ema itself ta dot ema it's a simple function inside this function right i have to pass the two parameters you can see that i have to pass the source and length both are mandatory things so i'm going to pass the source source is nothing but the close of the candle when i say close of the candle i am not passing the current closing value of the candle this close of the candle is called the series i'm closing i'm sending the value of each and every candle close value i'm sending okay so in case if i am having 5000 candlesticks all the 5000 candlestick data i am sending it inside the function okay right so right. it is it is not an uh, so one thing you always when it comes to systematic trading the first learning with the coding is like am i dealing with a number or am i dealing with the historical data set the close is a historical data set over here you, you see that anything which is mentioned in red color uh, dark red color here it is built in uh, it is a built in variable so, oh, okay okay yeah so we call it as a series in when it comes to trading view we call it as a series some people call it as an array some people call it as a data set and uh, some people in in python they call it as a data frame so different programming languages they have different terminologies in trading view uh, we call it as a series a series is means when i say series uh, maybe i'll uh, try to explain for example let's say the closing the close of the candle value is like uh, 100 next candle is 101 next candle goes to 101.5 and 106 it be keep on going on and on and on and the latest value will be like something like 107 or something like that so all these data i will be passing as a one single variable called close it is a recognized variable by uh, it is a recognized variable by trading view itself so if i change the time frame you know what will happen automatically it will take the closing value of that particular time frame right yeah. now i am in a 15 minute time frame yeah. yeah tomorrow if i change it to or immediately i change it to daily data then the code will sense automatically it will fetch the closing of the daily candle of all the candles in the daily time frame it will fetch automatically so that brings a very important theme called code reusability you build the strategy for one time frame you can reuse the same strategy for any number of time frames you want okay so that is the most important thing and that is where uh, compared to excel based strategies pe previously people do build strategies in excel which is not having time frame compatibility yeah. so here you build strategies in one time frame and you can reuse the strategies in any number of time frames sure and then i'll go to ema2 i'm creating another variable as i said uh, uh, the ema1 here i'm just sending ema of close comma length 1 so length 1 we know that length 1 it's going to store by default the value is going to be 20 mm -hmm. right that, that is what length 1 will be storing however I can, as a user i can also change so uh, first i'll i'll build that and then i'll show you then ema of for close comma length 2 okay mm. so ema 1 and ema 2 we had computed next step is to plot the indicators plot the indicators right so when it comes to plotting the indicators i'm going to use a simple plot function so plot is a simple function to plot those values three things are primarily required one is what you want to plot in my case it's going to be ema1 and second one is like color i'm going to say like color equal to uh, there is a function called color dot new i if you know the color you can straight away type color red or color green you can uh, better you can I'll, i'll put a color green to that so one is EMA one is mandatory. Other things are optional. Uh, what you want to plot is mandatory. If you don't specify any colors, automatically trading view will apply some default colors. Sure. Uh, so in our case, uh, we want to give a color. So I'll say like color green, and then uh, the next one is like line width. So line width, I'm gonna say like how thicker the line should be. Line width. If you want a thicker yeah, lines, you can. how do you know the uh, context of this function uh, so by pressing so you can always go to the plot i had done this numerous amount of times so now, yeah, yeah. now i know what is what so, the uh, series is the ema1 you see the syntax you can match with the syntax 
got it so when i go to plot uh, uh, do i go to plot and just click this, this you have to button? use control click control control click. and sure, click sure. you will be able to get the documentation sure sure complete sure. documentation with examples you will be able to get however if you are a routine user you know uh, uh, that you already practiced for a longer period uh, if you don't if you want some instant snapshot you just place your uh, mouse on top of the function that you will be able to get the syntax and returns Sure. But if you want deeper information, you have to use a control click. Or if you are a Mac user, you have to use command plus click. It is there on the screen itself. Sure, sure. So just one recap uh, for all my learners that, uh, you know, all these plot functions and indicators, these are functions, okay, uh, yeah. which defines the uh, features or the, uh, or the you know, core things of TradingView, okay. And then all these moving average, etc. are variables which are like universal variables. So I hope you understand the difference between function and variables. Yes. Yeah. Function, it does set of operation and variable yeah. is used to store the calculations or got mathematical it. calculations. Got it, got it. Right. So uh, here I'll put a line width equal to two means it will be plotting a little bit thicker. And uh, that's what the EMA one will do. And uh, I'm gonna go with the EMA two also. I'll make it as color red. It's the same thing. So I'll just copying and pasting and changing the values alone. And I don't want to plot the close uh, because that is by default, it has been provided. So now I'll save the script. The moment I save the script, uh, uh, it also comes with an, uh, I think. So there is a compiler will be there. Okay. Anyways, so I'll, I'll save it. If at all, if there is any issue with, if I missed any of those things, if I try to save it, probably it will be notified. You can see that it automatically notifies me that hey, there is some issue with the line number 15. So I had to go wow. back and check what is there with the line number 15. Wow. Uh, I have to go and fix it and then I'll save it. Once the indicator is saved, then only you can apply on top of the uh, chart. You can click on directly. If you want to add, you can add it to the charts. This is one way to do that. So here I had done the, I had the charts. So now you can see that this is what we have is a simple EMA crossover and still I haven't written any rules on top of that, but you can see that if I change the controls, if I change the controls over here, let's say something like uh, a 30 period and uh, maybe hundred, I'll be able to change the controls over here. Automatically the values will be keep on changing, or I can also change it with increasing values. I'll press uh, instantly will be the values will be changing uh, immediately. So, I had created a control and that control I had assigned to my calculation of EMA and then I'm plotting those EMA. So I'm now as a user, I don't need to worry about the code. Uh, once I create the controls, these controls, you remember, uh, probably if you see your yeah. TV screen, right, you'll be having all those controls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't need to know what is happening in the back end. All you know is how to increase the volume, decrease the volume increase the brightness, decrease the brightness. That is the kind of controls we are trying to create. So when you are designing a system, you need to know what are the primary inputs for your trading system, which one you want to adjust, uh, which one you need to adjust that you need to aware about that when you are designing any trading system. That is the first thing that you need to learn. Uh, that is very, very important because tomorrow you don't need to mess up with your code again and again and again. You build the code once and you use only the controls settings uh, that's how it is that's how a very good trading application should be going forward sure yeah. all right so that is uh, one thing over here now we plotted the indicators now next thing is like we are gonna bring some rules into that so what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna say like i'm gonna I'll keep this minimized a little and one other thing that you will be noticing here is like it keeps on maintaining versions automatically. Uh, you keep on doing any minor changes. It will be keep on every save you're doing it. It will be coming up as a revisions. So first oh. time you are saving, it will be version one. So if you want to fall back, you can always fall back to your previous codes. If you feel oh. like something has been disturbed, you can always go and fall back to the previous code. This is something which is not available in most of the uh, trading platforms. Like even in Ami Broker, Ninja Trader, most of the top popular uh, uh, tools, they don't have this feature. Very interesting feature, by the way. And uh, let's say I'm going to build my rule. So I'm going to say like uh, trading logic. I'm going to build my trading logic. 
you know trading logic is nothing but about uh, when to trade so we talked about that right when to trade so here i'm just defining a variable called buy buy is nothing but uh, i'm just going to write a trading logic when to buy hmm. okay hmm. so here I, i'm not still informing the trading view backtester itself i'm still writing a logic only sure. a trading logic is either true or false we call it as a boolean right so it's more of a boolean approach boolean boolean is a data type which is the output is always either true or false okay so we learned about series you know right that the close itself a series so here the close is a series close is a series close is a series and remember the ta.ema here the output if you see the output it it says like ta.ema source comma length source and length are the arguments we know that there is a small arrow mark which is pointing to series float what is the series okay. float is like when i try to plot the ema what the output what i am getting is i am getting the output for each and every candle i am getting the ema values it is not one ema number i am going to get i am not going to get the recent ema value i am going to get the ema value for each and every bar i am going to get that so if i change the time frame also automatically it calculates the ema and it gets for each and every bar it gets those values that is what a series is all about so here even in ema we are passing the close value is a series length one is a number it is not a series it's a one individual number 20 or 50 is a number we are going to pass but the function itself going to return us not a number it is going to return a series that series we are going to store inside ema1 okay so ema1 which contains series ema2 which contains series now i can also do an operation also like that let's say like i'm going to say like uh, uh, result equal to i'm also i can also add ema1 plus ema2 remember when i am doing this kind of calculation result equal to ema1 and ema2 i am trying to add both the moving averages and i'm uh, ema1 is a series ema2 is also series so when i add both the series the output is also a series so probably I'll, i'll show you the plot of the series as well plot of the addition of those things ema I'll, i'll call it as a result comma color equal to color dot red comma line with equals to i'll save it and show you so the third one the yellow color line probably i'll make it as yellow yellow and save it over here so now if you could see that i am getting a yellow color line which is out of the scale probably what i can do here is i'll, I'll make it as an average i'll divide the ema1 and ema2 i divide by 2 right so this entire calculation what i'm doing is a series so it does an average of ema1 and ema2 and plots the yellow color line now so you see that the yellow color line is nothing but the each and every candles uh, ema1 value ema2 value is getting averaged across the candlesticks so that's what the series is all about and uh, you do any calculation with the series the output is mostly it's going to be a series only most of the times right so I, i'm just uh, explain this just to understand how the calculations you can do calculations on top of that as of now i'm going to comment it the, when i do commenting it is not part of the code at all it becomes part of the comment right so whenever i want if i want it i can reuse it or if I, if you don't want to see it you can simply remove those things i'll better i'll remove it for simplicity now let's go and focus on the trading logic i'm going to say like buy equals so i'm going to write a simple rule i'm going to call the library first of all you know right the ta dot anything with ta dot uh, is a library which is belongs to the technical analysis library they had uh, in the version 5 they they brought the concept of library in version 4 such concepts are not there earlier the functions are you can directly call an ema function now you have to call any technical analysis function you have to call so for example i'm going to call one of the important function called ta dot crossover so crossover is a function which will look for a crossover between two series right so two series in the sense uh, ema1 is a series ema2 is a series whenever it's going to do a crossover only for that candle it will become true 
else if there is no crossover it will become false so output itself a sequence of true and false will be keep on maintaining false 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 and false as long as the condition is not matched once there is a crossover is there only at that time it becomes true rest all the place rest all the places it's going to become uh, false it's going to maintain false sure so i'm going to say like i'm going to enter uh, two variables ema1 comma ema2 this is a two arguments i'm passing so ema1 and ema2 are two different arguments you see that the ta dot crossover it says like the output the syntax if you see that syntax is ta dot crossover source 1 comma source 2 source 1 is the data one that ema1 we are sending it's a series ema2 is also series and the output is series bool i said bool means true or false so output itself for each and every candle it compare the ema1 value and ema2 value for each and every candle it will compare and sure. each and every value if the condition matches it becomes true else if the condition becomes false right vivek yep yep so sell signal it's like buy it is a condition for long entry and sell it is going to be a condition for long exit i'm going to write a condition for long exit so here we are having in one more function called cross under cross under ema1 comma ema2 so crossover looks for a positive crossover it looks for a positive ema crossover and long exit it looks for a negative ema crossover negative ema crossover so now probably if you see the code the code is readable even if anybody who is a non coder they can understand that they are creating some input controls and uh, computing the indicators and plotting the indicators trading the uh, they are creating a trading logic when to trade when to enter when to exit so long entry signals long exit signals what this line of code is doing so along with that comment it adds more value even a non coder can easily understand these kind of things it's a it's a very simplified things the only thing is like the trader has to put some sort of effort so that uh, they can kick start their systematic trading career right so systematic trading is all about putting some eff- extra effort to get into the rule based trading and once you get into that i uh, i'll tell you you will never return back to the previous discretionary based uh, trading stuff Sure. now just uh, one question rajendra uh, yes. ta crossover function which you have used when yes. you put ema1 before ema2 that means you are looking at crossover of EA, ema1 over yes. ema2 right yes sir uh, what we are looking here is uh, ema1 which is cutting the ema2 from downside to the upper side so that is that has been defined in this ta dot crossover function yes, there, it is cross over and cross under is the exact opposite of that where ema1 is cutting the ema2 from the top to the bottom cut right got it it's got breaking it. down it's ema1 is breaking the ema2 on the downside got that it is cross got under it. got it yeah. so this is a plain vanilla indicator now on top of this we have to we created a trading logic right now this trading logic i'm going to bring it with the visual indications buy and sell kind of signals i'm going to bring it over here for that we can use a function called plot shapes so plot shape is a function uh, you can see that the plot shape function uh, where we can uh, input the series uh, in our case the series are nothing but the buy and sell we can give a title we can give a style uh, where you want to plot uh, what uh what do you want to plot so when i want to plot some sort of a labels i want to plot let's say i want to say like buy indication sell indication i want to plot it like a clown some sort of a cloud style so first thing is first i'm going to input the series series is nothing but a buy and then second one is title so i'll say like comma title or if you if you don't want to enter the title straight away you want to go to style i'll say like style equal to in my case i'm going to say style equal to if you don't know what are the different type of style available now what you can do here is first of all you go and open the uh, plot shape uh, try to get some examples or uh, still you want you can just simply type style here so style oops here you can go and type style so style dot the moment i type uh, style dot i will be able to get away i mean i'm sorry it's not style dot it's shape dot So okay. shape dot i'll be able to get various types of things uh, should i want to plot an up arrow or a down arrow for buy signal some people want to plot an up arrow 
for cell signal they want to plot a down arrow now in my case i am not going to plot the up arrow or down arrow instead i'm going to use a label up and label down is what i'm going to use so you can go and get to know more about those shapes different types of shapes are available the moment you type shape dot you'll be able to find the list of shapes which are supported by trading view yeah right. so coming back to the uh, here so i'll say like shape dot shape dot i'll say like a label up is what i'm going to do and followed by that what i am going to do here is i'm also going to bring some more uh, important uh, locations so what location that you want to location equal to again for location the same thing that is what we're going to do over here so again go to that uh, same place if you don't know what location uh, what location is all about you just simply type location dot you'll be able to find the various types of locations location so where you want to plot the Uh, indication whether above the bar you want to plot or below the bar you want to plot or at the bottom or at the top or absolute so they have mentioned different locations so in my case since it is a buy signal i want to plot below the bar i'll say location dot below bar is what i'm going to make it location dot below bar right so you can see that automatically it becomes red that means it is a it is a, a these way values are already known by trading view hmm so again i'm going to say color color equal to i'm going to make it like color dot green it's a green color uh, output and then uh, i'm also going to say title equal to buy title so what do you want to plot i'm going to say like title equal to buy and uh, so followed by that i'm also going to say uh, probably i can also define the text color as well so text color i can define text color so text color is also part of the plot shapes text color size whether you want a small size big size you can control the size also so i'll say like color dot white okay. so this is for uh, buy signal and for sell signal i'm going to change it to sell and label down is what i'm going to plot label down and location above the bar is what i'm going to plot it above the bar and the color i'm going to make it like red and title i'm going to say like cell so most of the variables i had plotted let me save the code i'm just saving it i'll go to the indicator and i'll add it to the indicator so we have an uh, indications over here it's a small tiny indication is what we are getting over here so this kind of an uh, it's Uh, probably the one more important uh, thing that we need to define which is like the style location of the text so text is another thing i have to define it as of now i haven't defined any text at all let's say like by and whenever you're defining a text you have to include a, within a quotation within a quotation or single quotation you have to use it. either double quotation or single quotation you can use it inside a trading view you can see that there are places where i'm giving a title i'm using a single quotation over here some places i'm using a title equal to double quotation so interchangeably you can use those quotations right when it comes to text content or any string content we have to give those single quotations or double quotations and finally text equal to i'll say like cell now once we are done with that automatically those text contents will be automatically plotted whenever there is a negative ema crossover the cell will be plotted remember whenever you are plotting the shapes right you have to plot shapes only on the uh, the output should be either true or false wherever it is true it will plot the buy signal wherever the cell is becoming true it will plot the sell signal with that uh, label down so probably i'll show you what is label up and label down is all about it's a label up you see that it's a kind of a cloud uh, which comes with the up label it it points to the upwards so it's a, it's a buy here and probably a sell indication so those kind of indications once if you are the once you becoming comfortable with the, the boolean values and you start operating on those boolean values the true and false conditions you can easily convert that true and false into buy and sell indications right this is a first example for a simple indicator now i convert this indicator into trading strategy 
now to convert this into a trading strategy so far what we worked on is only on the trading logic part only we had worked on now let me tell you when it comes to execution logic i have to do some more changes a small changes is what i had to do what i have to do here is uh, let me save this code as a new one i'll call copy it control c i put control i control i is a shortcut key for getting into a new code so i'll save the code and then i'm going to move to a fresh code over here and here i'm going to copy and paste those values now what i'm going to do here is this indicator i'm going to convert into a strategy everything is going to be the same thing title short title overlays everything is going to be the same thing but it is going to be a strategy now you know previous one is more of a indicator now currently what we are trying to code is a strategy strategy comes with what entry rules when to enter which when which order to place how many quantity you want to place so all those execution logic is what we have to code on top of our trading logic so we have a trading logic here we have a trading logic over here now this trading logic is what we have to convert to execution logic which can be later on used for automated trading also so here i'm going to use a execution logic okay so when, when it comes to this execution logic it is very simple in uh, trading view uh, for example let's say i want to send a buy order i want to send a market order whenever the signal is coming in whenever the buy signal is coming in i want to send a market order in that case i'll be using a function called strategy dot entry strategy dot entry is a function to send orders or we can also say like uh, we can also send some imaginary orders to trading view so that trading view records that hey this is a location it entered long so we are also informing the back tester as well where to enter at what price to enter should i have to enter at that price immediately or should i want to enter at the end of the candle so all those things are part of the execution logic so here strategy dot entry i'm going to say like when there is a buy signal i'm going to enter as a buy and i mean i'm sorry uh, the strategy dot entry you see that first one is a id id is nothing but each and every order that we are passing we need to have some id to that so let's say i'm just giving a name like it's going to be a long entry so i'll give a tag to that it's it's kind of an id it says like it's a long order and direction which direction you want to buy so i'm going to say like strategy dot long strategy dot long so the strategy dot long specifies which direction you want to enter so i'm entering into a long trade over here if in case if you want to enter into short you can say like i want to short this uh, i i want to say like strategy dot short it will take a short position in the markets so then quantity i'll say like quantity equals i'll say like only one lot is what i'm going to trade uh, remember in trading view if you are trading in cash market you have to specify the quantity if you are using future contracts automatically trading view knows the lot size trading you knows that nifty lot size nifty futures lot size is 50 so automatically it, it assumes that you are trading with only one lot of nifty so here when i say quantity equal to 1 it is by default assuming that one lots is what i want to trade so quantity is defined then what uh, should you want to put a limit order or a stop loss order if in case if you want a stop loss target all those things you can control it but in our case we are going to send a plain vanilla market order when the signal comes end of the candle i want to transmit the order that's what i am going to do over here so i am going to keep it very simple as of now so uh, um, uh, but when to enter the long so there is a function called uh, there is a variable called when i'll say when equal to when my buy signal is getting true when my buy signal is getting true enter long with quantity 1 that is what i am giving a instruction to the trading view so likewise i also want to enter short i want to sell uh, here I, i want to sell so when i want to sell i have to say like uh, probably i want to short if in case i want to short i'll say like strategy dot short when equal to sell when sell is becoming true whenever sell is becoming true you know that sell is nothing but a series of true and false whenever sell is becoming true it will try to take a short in the system right so it will try to take a short so since this strategy is all about long and short you know a long and short strategy we always go long and then we'll reverse from long to short we close our old long position and we also invoke a fresh short position 
so if i want to this is for long entry this is for long entry likewise i also have to code my long exit right i want to exit my long i want to exit my long when strategy dot close so here i'm just exiting my positions so strategy it's what i'm missing here strategy dot close i'll say like i'm going to close that position and i'm going to say here like when i want to close the position when equal to sell so maybe this part might be a little bit confusing for the first timers but I, i'll explain one more time so this is like short entry and a short exit short exit no i think this part is quite approximate that you always yeah. want to be there in the market so when when moving average crossover is happening you buy and when the crossover is happening on the yes, downside we want to close our old position and we want to convert into convert a new position yes actually it is a double shot but yeah, uh, here in our case uh, since we are, we want to uh, if i give only the entry itself it will take automatically uh, but uh, if you want to close the position if you want to close the previous position you have to take a strategy dot close you have to say like uh, when you want to close when the sell signal is coming in you want to close at the same time uh, since sell condition we also assigning it to the short it also take a fresh short as well so again when uh, short exit i want to exit when i'm going to say like uh, when buy signal is getting true when buy is true i am going to uh, exit my shorts so automatically okay. what will happen long short long short will be keep on happening in the system correct so now i'll save this strategy here i'll i'll save it and then i'll say like ema crossover strategy i'll give a name to that yeah now all these script will be saved under your personal folder so if you go to my symbol if if you go to that function f of x here okay right you can find my scripts under my scripts whatever the scripts that you had built up oh my god so all those things you'll be able to see it from here you are truly using it huh? yeah i'm i'm a, uh, <laughs> awesome i've been using since 2013 onwards yeah 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 so uh, this is or if in case if you want to go for a community scripts as i said there are thousands of scripts are there you name yeah. anything it is there in uh, the community you just all you have to do is you just go and search for that let's say you want to go for a dmark indicator probably somebody would have coded that so you can also the best part is you can go and see the code also you can see the code and you can copy the code you can add it to your charts you can experiment with that you can take ideas from there a lot more things you can do with that awesome awesome right so I'll so I can go. copy the code, improvise it, and save yes, it as my yes, script. Yes, yes, yes. Probably you cannot uh, release right now. The moderators are very strict uh, here, so you cannot republish the same code with some color changes. They are not accepting. <laughs> but if it is an original idea, they are yeah. allowing it in the community right now. Right now, uh, the the moderation is getting very strict over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anybody copying and they are changing it in their names and uh, they are calling it their own indicators, some fancy indicators, color change. So people are doing that. So to avoid that, moderators are getting strict in trading you these days. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I'll go back to the old code of ours itself. So we had what what we done right now is we converted the indicator. We connected the in fact we connected the indicators with the orders. When to enter long, when to enter short, when to exit the long, when to exit the short is what we had done that. Now I'll save the code. I'll add it to the charts. Now you find something very interesting that automatically it opens up a tab called Strategy Tester. So it it opens up a Strategy Tester, and it shows right. So what is the strategy profitability in that particular time frame? If I select fifteen minute time frame, what is the profitability? Whether the strategy is profitable or not, it lists each and every trade. It lists when it enter long. So the long the long signal is what I had given right. This long signal. is what i had entered in my code this long id so that long id it, it fetches in the strategy tester it shows what time it entered long at that time what was the closing price of the candle what is the exit criteria when you are when you are exiting right what is that price what is the overall profitability it it does for the, the entire data set which is available but only drawback with trading view is like uh, uh, trading view contains a uh, limited data sets probably if you are using hourly time frame you will have more data i i think uh, it depends upon your uh, pricing plan also if you are a free user you will get up to 5000 bars i think let us whatever be the data set up to 5000 bars of historical data it is available for the free user maybe if you are using a pro plan or pro plus plans or uh, the the premium plan if they are having it you'll 
I think you can go and access up to some uh, 2000 uh, bars of data, which is a quite decent data if you are trading in a 15 minute time frame or something like that. So you can, I think maximum you can go up to some, uh, if you are using 15 minute data right now, I'm in a pro plus plan here. So I think I can go up to how many months? Up to some, like from, I think from, it's, it's getting even more. I think I'm having up access up to 10,000 bars, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think Pro 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 Plus is a very good plan. I'm a premium yeah. plan member, but I think oh, is it? Plus okay. is sufficient for people. Yeah. So uh, definitely if you are a new user, you can try with 5,000 bars. But once yeah. you are getting serious, you need more data set. Uh, so that the more the data set it is, uh, very uh, better the backtesting results are going to be. You will get a true uh, uh, nature of the trading system. Sure. So from that strategy tester, uh, the first thing is like, I'll go to the overview tab and then I'll explain what exactly this overview tab is all about. Hmm. Uh, it contains two things. One is the equity curve. So equity curve talks about when you are following the buy sell signal, like a soldier, your own rules, you are following like the own soldier, you are, you are following your own rules, then how your money would be growing over a period of time, whether it is consistently stable or it is making money, losing money, making money, losing money. By looking into that strategy itself, you can have a clear idea. Do I have a continuous edge in the markets or not? Now, some strategies like EMA crossover, you know, right? it doesn't perform in all the market conditions, but it performs in a trending market condition. It performs in a sideways market condition. It is not going to perform. It's most going. It's most of the time it's going to get into losses. Whipsaws are going to happen. So the primary idea is to reduce the uh, whipsaws in the trade. Whipsaws you cannot ignore because. Uh, uh, as I said, it since it is more a uh, rule-based systems, right? We cannot ignore whipsaws. There are times a system can go for 10 times in a row or 20 times in a row of whipsaws. When such kind of whipsaws are happening, how much risk I am incurring is what that really matters. That is what we can measure in the form of drawdowns. Probably you can see the, uh, uh, the, the brown color line, the brownish shade lines that talks about the risk. And the equity curve talks about the returns. So it is in one screen, you are seeing both the risk also returns also. Risk in terms of drawdowns. So when the curve is going down, that means the strategy is incurring losses. Probably, uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to show with an, uh, you can see here. These are the places, these are losing phase. So these are the losing phase. Now during this losing phase, the equity curve goes down. When the equity curve is moving up, I mean, when the, when the equity curve is moving up, you can also see that the drawdown curve is reducing. And whenever it is uh, getting to zero, the, the drawdown levels are getting to zero. That means your equity curve is hitting a new peak. Uh, new new highs are coming in. That's what it means with the, it's, it's crossing the previous peak. It's a new equity high is made in the system. So that time the drawdown goes to the zero values. Okay. Right, so drawdown, uh, many people's question is like, what drawdown is a comfortable one? So it depends upon what kind of strategy that you're going to adopt, right? So sometimes if you are a trend follower or you want to design trend following systems, uh, trend following systems will have huge, uh, sometimes there are uh, uh, market phases, which goes erratic, like March 2020 kind of phases. The drawdown will be a bit extensive. Sometimes uh, trend following systems can exceed like 30, 30 35 or even 40, 45 percentage of drawdown, a trend following system can go. For some people, it is not acceptable. For some institutions, there are even some bigger, bigger institutions, they know that trend following systems, they do have a higher, bigger drawdown. Means at some point of time, from your peak of the capital, drawdown is mostly measured from the peak of the capital. Here, in, in our case, this is a peak capital and to the trough of the capital. So from the peak of your capital to the trough of the capital, how much money has been lost? That is what we call as a drawdown. If the system is having a drawdown of something like 20 percentage, it is acceptable and many people love to have a lower drawdown as much as possible. But that is not the reality with the trend following systems. Most of the trend following systems generally approaches 30, 35, 40 percentage, sometimes even 50 percentage also, because there are times we never seen such kind of market condition like March 2020. Nobody would have anticipated sudden volatility, sudden burst of uh, uh, suddenly when, when you're carrying longs next day, there was a big gap down. So that if the strategy is having an overnight risk is there. 
then strategy might experience sudden uh, bigger drawdowns or if the strategy is keep on going sideways for a prolonged time or sometime back in uh, february march april may market went compressed for almost 4 months nifty futures itself went compressed for almost 4 months now those are the places these ema crossover kind of strategies would have resulted in a uh, continuous drawdown L- loss after a loss loss after a loss that results in a continuous drawdown now those are the places people get into an emotional way and uh, remember one thing when you are running a trend following strategy many traders question is like does it give consistent returns let me tell you if you are looking for consistent returns you should not trade trend following systems maybe you should try some straddles or strangles or some passive yeah. uh, option trading approaches trend following approach let me tell you why, why people should run or who should run trend following approach from my experience uh, trend following should be approach i uh, should be run only by the people who are strong in heart right so because uh, there are times the strategy will go for a drawdown of some uh, two or three months or four months sometimes even six seven months also there are period which i experience seven months of continuous drawdowns right so those are the places still your uh, military discipline will be put under a test so that is where a strong heart is required to still after all the seven months you are not making money think about that how emotionally you will be feeling yeah. and you will be feeling like oh my god i am doing a stupid thing that that is the kind of things will be running in your mind uh, but that is what trend following is all about but my primary question what majority of the traders they will be asking if a strategy is going for a seven months of drawdown then why i should run but let me tell you i been experienced all kind of trading strategies but trend following is one strategy which will give maximum uh, returns over a period of time it doesn't gives any consistent return there are months it can deliver 40% returns also but there are returns there are times it can uh, deliver a 20% loss also there are times it can deliver a 47% kind of returns also so the returns are not consistent but returns are consistent over a period of time over a period of time maybe i'll show you a simple example how a simple strategy like super trend uh, maybe i'll try to pull up an uh, another uh, strategy here yeah i'll go to pine editor i'll go and uh, pull up my script so this is one of the strategy with the automation code i'll save the i'll add it to the charts so i'll get the access to the uh, so something when you are creating a strategy wow. the whole idea of to uh, no this is something which i haven't included any commissions and slippages i'll come to that part also <laughs> okay. so uh, so this is like uh, yes when you are applying any simple strategy there are times you might end up getting this kind of smooth equity curve this is the first thing which i got uh, wonder oh my god i can easily create a strategy that is what it impresses me to get into the system a uh, little later i understand that yes we have a lot of other cost we have to include that we cannot ignore the cost i'll tell you why you should not ignore the cost the primary thing here is if i go to the settings here right so there uh-huh. is a feature here i can go to the properties and i can go and set my commissions oh right so this commission part and slippage part how many commissions and slippages generally i prefer to use the commissions and slippages over here so i i, I put in 0.03 percentage commission even if you are using an uh, uh, discount brokerage mostly these days 20 rupees brokerage right so some people they what they do is like they put 20 20 rupees uh, per order is what they put Uh, so in that case they they think the 20 rupees is negligible but let me tell you we also have gst we also have uh, stt stamp duty like uh, transaction exchange turnover charges right sebi charges all those charges are coming in so everything you put together in percentage terms generally narrow down to 0.012 if you are using nifty futures or bank nifty futures mm-hmm. right or you, you can do a simple calculation you can open a brokerage calculator let's say something like uh, uh, you just type brokerage calculator uh, most likely it will be ending in uh, zero the only so here you can go and do the calculations you you can go and calculate in a percentage terms if you are running in uh, intraday equity delivery what is your cost if you are running in fndo what is your cost let's say if i am buying and selling let's say uh, if i am doing in a 10 lakh worth of turnover so i'll, I'll create a 10 lakh worth of turnover over here 5000 and 5000 i'll put something like 100 quantity 
So this is like I'm creating a 10 lakh worth of turnover. If I do 10 lakh worth of turnover, then my cost will be uh, 1.3, 1.8. That means in percentage terms, it will be coming around uh, 0 0.013 is what I generally I get if I am a futures trader. This is only the cost. This doesn't include the slippage cost. So uh, if it is a slippage cost, I have to add some more extra uh, cost because generally slippages, you cannot avoid if you are a, a trader who is going to place a market order because market order gives you a confirm execution signal comes, you're going to execute it. So your execution will be confirmed, but you will end up getting a higher price. Let's say your uh, trade is coming at 18,000. You're sending the order. The moment you are sending the order, there is a small delay will be there, right? You open the trading terminal and uh, enter the values or uh, pass on the values. So there is also bid and ask prices there. Obviously, you are not going to get uh, always at the last traded price. Sure. So sometimes you it will be hitting the bid or ask. So instead of getting at buy at 18,000, you may end up getting at 18,002. So that small two rupees uh, difference here is the slippage. So that slippage cost, if I put in percentage terms, most of the time, uh, it will be narrowing down to 0 0.03 percentage commissions. Or I can also say like how many ticks I can, uh, I will get a slippage. Generally, uh, that, that is ideal way to enter the commissions and slippages. In my case, I enter the commissions and slippages in one tab itself. Or if you know how many ticks exactly happens, it varies different times. When markets are highly volatile, slippages will be bigger. When uh, in a calm market, slippages will be very less. You'll be able to get the easily, you'll be able to get that uh, very nearest price near to your entry point or your exit point. You'll be able to get that. So commission is yet another important thing that when you are doing sure. systematic trading, after that, you have to getting, you have, if you, your strategy is giving it still a decent results, then sure. yes, it is a trade. Rajendran, can you just go to that setting once again? Yeah, so here is the settings. Yeah, just change that uh, commission drop yeah, down okay. to uh, the percentage percent terms. Yeah, yeah because if, if, I think the graph uh, may change. Yeah, it, because yeah, the, the it curve is not way. smooth anymore. It, you yeah, see that yeah, it's yeah, a rough yeah. path now, but still it makes money over a period of time. Hmm. Right? I, I'm not saying like you should go and trade super trend. Uh, this is one example, but uh, this here, the test we had doing is like hardly one year of data, I think, uh, is what we are having. And it almost tested some 460 trades. Generally, I love to trust in an environment where 10 years of data kind of uh, set, but uh, that is a limitation with trading view itself. Sure. Right? So, yeah. So the strategy itself profitable only 40% of the time, but it is making money because of the profit factor, right? So the profit factor is kind of a risk reward ratio. Higher the number, better the uh, sure. results are. And uh, uh, more your equity curve is smooth and straight going forward. It is more it is getting tradable, but there are places we can see the drawdowns coming in. These are the emotional challenging places. Like here, imagine you are trading uh, up to this point and uh, you are going for a losing period. And to break even, it is almost taking some 200, al almost 200 trades, right? Almost 200 trades. You have to be in the game to get a break even, right? So that is where the challenging phase is. But still, uh, the only thing is like you can see the trading system as an alternative to employ somebody else on behalf of you and uh, like and uh, instead of uh, in, instead of you going and playing continuously watching the markets you know watching the market itself watching the price action itself there are many traders they get emotionally biased towards the price there are many traders who trade a uh, lot more price action traders are there they see the price and suddenly they, so there, there is a sudden drop in a, let's say uh, Infosys or Reliance, suddenly people get caught into that attention. They get into something which that is not part of their trading process at all. So that thing will come down. And uh, the next best advantage is like, yes, it makes money only over a period of time. It doesn't returns any week on week returns, month on month returns, it will not make it. So if you are looking for a consistent return, you should stay away from trend following approaches. Sure, sure. So the, Rajin, there's just one question in this uh, data, 74% uh, max drawdown means from your peak return. Yes. Uh, you have from seen 74% reduction in the profitability. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that is where the capital allocation is more important. So here we are assuming that the capital size is 1 lakh. So maybe uh, a right capital allocation should be like something like a 3 lakhs. So right capital allocation, how much I should allocate to trade one lot of Nifty. So maybe something like if you are using a three lakh, 
or four lakhs so in in that case uh, you know right the the overall uh, drawdowns can be uh, oh. reduced right? so uh, uh, yeah i know uh, if you are you having 1 1.1 lakh you can trade one lot of nifty but mm-hmm. you also need to manage a, a additional buffer capital to manage the m2m losses which are arising so sometimes you will be going through the drawdown phase right to manage this drawdown phase you also need to uh bring an additional capital right so the, that additional pa- capital you can always park with a broker or you can take some liquid bees and whenever you want you can liquidate it and then you can supply it so that the idle money will not lying idle all the time so it will be always working to generate some extra money or that idle money you can also use it to do some uh, neutral strategies also sure sure so uh, what but, yeah. so rajinder what i'm thinking uh, because you know we we have covered so many things in this video Yes. And obviously, uh, this is just we have reached a particular stage. Beyond that, now more detailed understanding of uh, how to evaluate a strategy and how to connect the strategy to a trading engine. Uh, you know, something yeah. which you guys are building uh, in the form of Algo Mojo. Yes. So I would love to have another, you know, another video with you as a follow-on to what we have discussed today. Sure. And uh, see how the you know the final leg of. uh the whole rule based uh, system and stick trading gets uh, terminated <laughs> yeah absolutely i am happy to do that yeah because i think this is this is super this is the the correct uh content which i was expecting from you but this has this has become very long so <laughs> i'm sure the people who have stayed till the end uh, would have really enjoyed the way i've enjoyed and i'm going to start practicing this i'm going to create my own indicators and i'm going to show you the results how <laughs> i am doing it take your feedback <laughs> Okay. And uh, friends, uh, I mean, Rajinder has brilliant YouTube channel. Uh, I think in the name of uh, Market Call. Yeah, Market Calls. Market Calls. Yeah. So you should visit that YouTube channel. He has recorded so many videos, similar kind of a video, if not better. Uh, so people who want to learn rule-based systematic trading, he's the man. <laughs> Just connect with him, and he'll make sure that uh, he he teaches you the right way. In fact, he has taken couple of webinars in Elon Markets as well. Yes. Uh, I'm going to send the link of that webinar below this video. Uh, if you find it useful, you can see those webinars as well and continue your super journey of understanding rule-based trading. Yeah. Rajendra, unfortunately, we have to close this one. <laughs> Feeling so bad about it, but give me a commitment for a next video as soon as possible. Sure, probably next week. How about next week? We can do that. Oh, fantastic! You're yeah. so sweet. Thank you so much for this awesome time you have given to us, and I'm really, really obligated. Uh, so. And Very thank you good. Vivek for giving me this wonderful opportunity to explain to your audience. Thank you. Thank you Rajinder. Let's stay in touch and friends another video will come very soon. Uh, sure. We'll we'll figure out a mutual convenient time slot and we'll record and send it to you guys. Yeah. Thank you so thank much you. for attending this one. Do share this video with your friends who are serious about making money as a trader in market for long term. All right? Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank Rajinder. you. Yeah. Thank you Vivek. Bye.